Hey folks, Matt from RightOfTheImage.com. One of the most fascinating, most interesting, most popular cameras to be released to date is the Sony A7 Mark III. It's the third iteration of the A7, that full-frame camera from Sony, full-frame mirrorless interchangeable lens camera, a milk, if you were, if you will, um, that is uh, pretty impressive. In fact, this possibly could be the perfect camera. At least that's what Sony's saying. I've been taking notes and looking through the specs. I've had a lot of people asking me about this camera. A lot of people saying, Matt, what's your thoughts on the a7 III? Should I buy an a7 III? There's been a lot of people, a lot of inquiries about the a7 III. So I've been listening to people's initial reactions, reading the initial reviews, the initial reports. My good friend Peter Gregg has one on order. In fact, I think it's already shipped. He may even get it today. He's very excited about it. Sony on the homepage here, it says... Perfection for all, everything you need. So that's a pretty bold claim. However, I think it's possible that this may be exactly that. It could be the perfect camera for most people. Most people, I guess the caveat would be at this price point because we're at around $2,000 here, but this is a pretty impressive offering for the price. I don't I don't think anybody else, Nikon, Canon, Panasonic, offers anywhere near everything that this camera offers at this price point. Let's have a quick look. I've got seven main points with some sub points. I guess some of them could be, you know, eight or nine points. But uh, first of all, we got 24 megapixel sensor. Now, I would have liked to have seen Sony do something a little revolutionary and brought out, you know, raised the standard. As I've been saying, I wish Canon and Nikon would do. Our standard right now for a standard full-frame sensor is 24 megapixels. Standard in the sense that, you know, that's what our D610's at. That's what our D750's at. Um, that's what the new A7 III is staying at. The higher-level cameras are at higher levels of megapixels such as the D850 and the A7R Mark III, the 5DSR, even the 5D Mark IV. However, our standard uh, maybe entry-level cameras are at 24 megapixels still. Um, I would have liked to have seen somebody, it would have been nice for Sony here, to have bumped this to 30, made 30 the new standard. I think we have the tech to do it. Now, I'm not knocking Sony for this because what they've done will actually probably please more people than giving 30 megapixels because we're getting better ISO, arguably better ISO than even their low-light champion, the A7S. Some people are claiming it's a better high ISO camera than the A7S. We've got a claimed one and a half stops better ISO. That's our second point. We should tie that right in with this sensor. ISO 100 to 51,200, but expandable to 204,800 and still giving us 24 megapixels of full sensor resolution, full frame sensor resolution. So the decision was made here to not go up in megapixels, but give us quite a boost in IQ ability. And people are already saying, and you can see online, the high ISO uh, ability of this camera is pretty impressive. So number one, I would say is, is an advantage in that sense, I still would have liked to see what they could do with 30, but 24 with this big bump in the ISO ability, you know, one and a half stops claimed, arguably maybe as better than their A7S, their low light champion. Um, th that would be points one and two right there. Um, and it's a back illuminated sensor, so it's the newer technology. That's how we're getting that. We're getting better processors. We're getting this newer sensor technology we didn't have a few years ago. And we're getting the ability to really tweak it. And, and honestly, 24 megapixels is probably more than most people even need, especially from a sensor that's performing this well. Because you could certainly up res to what you needed with very little, if any, loss of image quality, depending on how big you need it to go. Number two, we've got 10 frames a second. We're seeing a lot of speed boosts in a lot of these cameras now because mirrorless is capable of shooting faster than a traditional DSLR with a mirror. So that's a, a big bonus right there. We've got this beautiful performing sensor at super high ISO abilities able to shoot at 10 frames per second. Now that 10 frames per second wouldn't mean a lot if we didn't have the next point, which is the 4D focus. We got 693 phase detect autofocus points combined with 
425 contrast style, contrast detect, um, autofocus points for this new 4D autofocus, which from all reports, from everything I'm seeing, this is a truly impressive autofocus system. Sony's been really good with the autofocus, class leading. I mean, as I've said in, in many other videos, one of the only companies that's that's really rivaling Canon right now for their wonderful dual pixel autofocus, that ability to focus smoothly and accurately during live view or during video. And um, that actually would lead into my next point, um, the fact that they do have the ability to do that. But um, I'm seeing evidence, as was actually originally related to me by my friend Peter Gregg, uh, when he was playing with the A7R3, and I believe he's seen it on the A9 as well. There are ways to tweak the autofocus system in the Sony that uh, at least Peter is telling me that he thinks the Sony's ability to do that dual pixel AF type focus is actually better than Canon's. He's telling me that the Sony is beating the Canon at its own game, namely the dual pixel AF. So at the very least, we have an incredible dual pixel AF style autofocus here. I, I reference it that way so that people understand because that is has been what Canon's claim to fame up to this point has been why you, a, a major reason why you would want a Canon over some of these other cameras. Well, now Sony seems to be moving into the lead on that. And that's very interesting and good for us. And you know what? Nikon and Panasonic, you guys need to pay attention here. You need to catch up because you really do need to catch up in this area. So the next point is 4K. Now, we've had 4K for a while, but this camera is pretty full-featured for 4K. Some pretty imp impressive specs from the codex to the um, the gamuts you can shoot at. What is it? The S-Log. Um, the full pixel readout, no binning. Uh, in other words, you're getting way more data coming into the funnel than you need for 4K and coming out with a super impressive looking 4K. 2.4 times the data needed for 4K is what Sony's website says. This has always been a strength of Sony. I mean, the 6500, the A6500 and the A6300 always had very nice 4K because they were basically shooting at 6K and then it was taking what it needed out of that for a very rich 4K. It's the same reason I say that you should shoot 4K and export to 1080 even if you only want 1080 because you get a nicer 1080 from a 4K original file. It just works that way. It's like using a power file, like a raw file, able to tweak it to get a better image than you might get out of a JPEG. The other thing, which is a huge advantage here that neither Canon nor uh, Nikon have done, is the five axis in body image stabilization. So we've got a built in image stabilization system in this body that allows you to use all manner of lenses that aren't image stabilized. Older lenses, primes that may still not have image stabilization built in, uh, just gives you a, a wealth of options and you've got image stable, a very good, competent, I might add, image stabilization built right into the camera. So that's Seven main points, you could say that was eight or nine, depending on what you're looking at. There, the other thing, actually, I, I neglected, I saw here, the eye focus, autofocus, the IAF, as they're referring to it. So the ability to track the eye with the autofocus system. This is another tweak. Um, quite an impressive camera. In fact, as Sony says here, perfection for all. Everything you need. And I'm going to put a question mark on that because I want to know what you guys think. Is it indeed, as Sony now made the perfect camera? Have they beat out Nikon and Canon as far as delivering the perfect camera? Everything you need? The camera for 99% of the people out there? You know, I kind of thought that's where the D850 was, except for the fact that at a price point that was above what most people would spend. This still might be above what some people would spend, but much more attainable at around $2,000, and in some regards offering more than the D850, especially in the fact that it's a competitor, if not a champion as far as maybe it beats out Canon's dual pixel autofocus. What do you guys think? What do you think of this 7D Mark III? Um, 7D Mark III. The A7 Mark III. The A7 III. Confusing that with Canon there. Um, what do you think of it? A7 III. Is it, is it everything you've ever wanted in a camera? Is it going to make you finally switch to Sony? Is this Sony's crowning achievement? And uh, is, is it what you're going to buy right now with your dollars. You're going to vote with your dollars. Um, is there something missing in the A7 III still that you 
uh, wish was there and it's stopping you from buying it? Do you have concerns about something about the a7 III or even the Sony offerings, why you won't buy into Sony? Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. I find this to be a fascinating camera. Um, certainly one of the strongest offerings to date, especially for the price point. Very good value here. Hard to argue that point. But I'd like to know what you guys have to say. As always, often some insightful comments. Sometimes things I hadn't thought of makes me think. Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.